Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner Classic Last Known Classics. This is number 2230 and the bar shot number 2124. Now this particular tra this particular review, I'm discussing stuff like one released two thousands and the other released in the 1980s. Two two runs by two really good writers. One who just do miniseries nowadays because his health is not allowing him to do any ongoing series. The other one I'm not sure what he does anymore. I, the only book I think I may have seen recently was maybe some Superman stuff, but that's it. But I'll get to him. Don't worry about that. First that we have is X Factor Volume, Volume 2, Life and Death Matters. This collects issues 7 through 12 of X Factor Volume 3. The, now, the one thing that's kind of set up here is Lila Miller getting together with James Andrix. Yes, Peter David basically hinted at this relationship this far back. And this does pay off. Like, she keeps telling Jamie, like, oh, I'm saving myself for our wedding night. Yes. And Jamie's like, okay. A little girl basically proclaiming she's going to sleep with me when, when she's older. That's the, of course, he, of course, does not have a thing for her. He has a thing for her, Teresa Cassidy, the daughter of Banshee. So... Most of the opening issue was just dealing with stuff related to what was going on in the previous issue. Now, issues 8 and 9 are quite interesting because these are Civil War 1 tie-ins. Yes, but they're also tying to what was going on in the X-Books at the time. The whole thing of the examination when they have the X-Men show up at X-Factor's door. Now, the reason why they show up there is because Quicksilver is there. Yes, there's a lot of tie-ins here. You have Son of M, which is the mini-series Quicksilver guy's power is back after the events of House and during the events of dissemination. And of course, Lila told the X-Men, I know you lied about the dissemination to, to keep yourself basically, like, she tells them that she does know the truth about the dissemination, that the, that the X-Men lied to the public about it. And she said that she's, she's not told the X-Fact about this, so they can keep their secret. And also the fact the reason they're, the, that they're there is because of Quicksilver. Yes, Quicksilver. And also in these issues, X-Factor publicly declares they're being against the Superhuman Registration Act. And the papers have been saying this, where X-Factor, the U.S. government, dropped dead. That's what the paper printed. Twisting words. They also deal with basically a guy named Dial of Miles, I believe his name is. The guy who's basically the primary antagonist of the opening issues. He's pretty much killed off by the end of these issues by one of Jamie's dupes. Yes, we also see a debut in the year of Jamie, what, Jamie's dupes, one who's a priest. I actually know the priest in the show, but basically one who's an agent of the FBI. There's one for S.H.I.E.L.D. of Alec Cooper is in here as well. It just, just continuing basically what Peter did was stop before we started off this run. I give this book a 9.5. Basically, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Just really fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. All right? No attempting suicide here. But, uh, the last ray I got for, for X Factor is the stuff that leads into, um, Messiah Complex. The next step is going to be quite interesting because I'm discussing issues of Thor. These were actually published in Thor by Walt Simonson, Volume 3, but I don't have the trait. So, <coughs> excuse me, issues I'm discussing are issues 357. The 362, 370, and the and the Boat of the Brave miniseries. Now, yes. Now, this is now this is getting toward... This is, I would say, about halfway through Walt Simonson's Cricket Claimer from the 1980s. He actually left for 382. Why? Don't know why. And the reason I'm covering 370, I'll get to that. So... Most of these issues, we just continue the... Well, here's the thing. The way they have it here is that in these in these issues, Walt Simonson has it where Lady Sif is in a relationship with with Beta Ray Bill for reasons. And then continuing that here. I guess that one of Thor's brothers here. Of course, Loki takes part in some of these events too. There's also a bit of uh, soap opera stuff going on in these issues too. Where I have where Thor gets involved with Lorelai. Yes. 
She he gets involved with Lorelai. Who and of course then we have we're in three fifty eight. We have Batery Bill versus the Titanium Man from Iron Man. Yep. I'll give a rating of these issues basically when it gets in. So this is more like was actually lower life. So most of the way they continue to try to do that romance thing while Beta Ray Bill is fighting. Well, Iron Man villain. Well, Titanium Man. Yeah, he does fight in this issue. And of course, she's also trying to seduce Loki. Yes, Lorelai is trying to seduce Loki while she's also trying to seduce Thor, uh, Thor himself. Yeah, playing up both of them for no reason. Yeah, I'm not really sure why in the world that she thought this was a good idea. And then we have with 359 where Loki joins, or Thor joins up with Loki. And then we have it where, get this, where Lorelai basically, now here's the thing. So Enchantress decided to make moves on Thor. I'm like, Thor, you lucky dude, you lucky guy. First you get Lorelai and then you get her hot older sister. Yep, and there's also a bit of a uh, lover's quarrel. There's also, apparently the Civ is fighting over him too. I'm like, and then he proceeds to smack her? Well, basically... He's in a mind control anyways. Yes, that's pretty much in the way what's going on here. And then he finds out that Lorelai is asleep with Loki. Yep. And they get into a fight about it. Yes, it's a bunch of basically soap opera stuff. Then in 360, Thor fights a zombie. Yep. After getting the mess of the previous issues of Lorelai and the Enchantress basically trying to seduce Thor. Yeah, it's basically Thor dealing with hella stuff. That's most of exactly what's going on here. Mm -hmm. You might also might be thinking like, what the heck is Walt Simonson doing with these issues? Just having where Thor is... And of course... We also deal with something to do with the... And then we have the Enchantress reading around it with the Executioner. Yep. And don't worry, there's nothing with him too in these issues. I'll get to that. So... Yeah, and Hell is here. And then 362... We have a tragedy happen in 362. In 362... Well, basically... Thor is dealing with the Forest of Hela... Walt Simonson basically in this issue kills off the Executioner. I'm not really sure why, but he does die in this issue basically saving people's lives as well as the last redemption for himself. And of course, you know, also for some reason Thor has his mouth covered up. No, it's nothing with COVID. But yeah, that pretty much is those issues in a nutshell. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why the Walt Simonson killed off I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure why he killed off this character for, but he did. He certainly did. And here's the thing, though. Scourge made dead for a long time, and excuse me, if you're curious, with Thor 362. That happened back in 1985. Scourge remained dead for a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, basically, you did. He did occasionally show up, mostly in aftermath stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and basically, well, he mean dead. Yes, until he was brought back in 2019. Mostly anyways. Actually, he was brought back in as Guardians of the Galaxy. Number one in 2018. So, Scourge made dead for 43, for about 33 years. Uh, was it was 33? Uh, no, 43 years you made dead. Gotta praise Marvel for the fact they kept never that long. Mostly probably, mostly here whenever he's dead, but he never actually officially came back to life. And then by the end of Asgardian's Galaxy, he died again. Not sure why, but he did. And <clears throat> it's almost like, what was the point of killing off him just to... How should I put this? Just to basically bring him back later. Which makes no frickin' sense at all. Yeah, he was only alive again for about a year. And then he died again. And you might be curious though. Has he experienced this even after his death? Yes, he has. He popped up in the Major Reveal miniseries. In his future future foundation. And one issue of Valkyrie Jane Foster. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> uh, by the way, I get those Walt Simons issues. A9 out of it. It's a little bit lower grade than what we had before. Next thing we have is Thor 370. Uh, the only issue from this era not in trade in the Walt Simons and stuff. The reason? Walt Simons didn't write this issue. Nope, he did not. The name the person wrote this issue was... Jim Owsley. And you're probably all thinking, Nick, who is Jim Owsley? You may know him today as Christopher Priest. Yep. This was, from what I can tell, a felon issue he did. Yes. Christopher Priest, yes, he may have had many successful ongoing series over the years. But like in the case of the... Black case Bill Manslow, who is not dead, by the way, just basically still in hospital all these years. <clears throat> he also did fill-ins, too. And this is one of his fill-in issues. And you might be curious, though, about Christopher Priest and these fill-in issues. Was this the only was this the only fill-in issue Christopher Priest himself ever did? Uh no. Not the only one he ever did, not per se, no, but uh, probably the only one for Thor he worked on. Yes, this was the only Thor she worked on as a fill-in writer. Yep, the only one. Why? I have honestly no idea why. But he has nothing much, I think the only thing he's done lately is he worked on the Black Adam series, which was really good, by the way. Mm-hmm. Most of the issue is basically the Asgardians, the Old West. That's it with the story of this one. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's like, what if the, that the Asgardians were Western characters? Yeah, that's mostly put exactly what this issue is. I mean, despite having Thor appearing into our costume, it's basically a Western issue. Now, I'm not sh And we have Loki appear here for some reason as an old man. And... 
the wonder why this is a film. It's just very strange. But next we have the Boulder Brave, uh, Boulder the Brave miniseries, a Forge miniseries. Done by the way, the, I get the issue a nine out of ten. Um, now we have Boulder the Brave. This is set before his apparent death in issue. I think it was three sixty. By the way, I think it was. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Actually, was in uh, three. Let's see. He may he may be alive for a long period of time. There wasn't apparent death of the character. But this mini series most took place during these issues. We also have Corona, who is his lover. Well, she appears in mini series. And as of currently, she's deceased. And this is my favorite thing about her. Did you know she married Hella? I'm not kidding about that. She married Hella. Because, ja because Jason Aaron had to do a lesbian wedding. Yeah, most of us, it's basically bold and adventure trying to save Asgard from Hellas invasion. That's most of what this miniseries is. It's written and drawn by Walt Simonson. Is the miniseries good? Oh, heck yes, it is. Actually, he just writes it. Sal Bush knows the artwork. But he does do the cover artwork here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give the miniseries itself because it's really good. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Just that, that good. Okay, so that's a particular view. Uh, next up is going to be one more comic corner, and it's going to be quite interesting, this one. Mm -hmm. Yep, to the next video. Bye.